Hi, this is Thomas of Polyga, and I'm going to show you how to use our Extract 3D plugin to process E57 point clouds. So the first thing we're going to do is to import the point cloud in. Um, one of the first things we want to do is to set the correct um, file units. So for point clouds, especially for terrestrial stuff that's usually in meters, uh, you need to set your SOLIDWORKS document as well as your import settings. Um, generally, this is a pretty big point cloud, it's around 6 gigabytes. I've accelerated the video somewhat so that it doesn't take forever, uh, but usually it takes a few minutes, but in this case it's uh, instantaneous for purposes of, um, of time here. And I'm going to show you a couple of the basic tools and workflows that you can use for E57s. Um, the first thing I generally do is to set up some sort of clip volume, just because uh, when I import the E57, they're usually ginormous, and I do really do you want to just clip the data to the areas I'm interested in? In this case, I just did a circular clip around the center of it. And, and the next thing I'm going to do is just create a couple basic references and this shows off some of the basic functionality. In this case, I just created a 3D line segment in SOLIDWORKS by referencing the point cloud. And you can see that uh, the length was about seven, seven meters there. Uh, for some basic measurements, I'm going to measure this little pipe here uh, very quickly using a line and it shows that it's about one point about one meter or so, which is about correct. Extract 3D's tools are relatively straightforward. Um, next, I'm going to show you how to just extract a couple, you know, basic 3D points and, and create a plane and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, this part's relatively straightforward. I essentially just create some 3D points, then create a bunch of line segments um, around here. Um, pretty much all the core functionality for uh, for Extract 3D works like this, which is you use some of the basic tools to uh, to reference the point cloud uh, and create a bunch of different primitives. In this case, I just showed you how I, how I did a uh, quick plane. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is show off how to um, ex extract more useful information. I'm going to show you how to extract a couple of different planes as well as uh, reverse engineer this beam here. So the first thing we want to do, uh, if we want to extract this beam, is to create the uh, plane that it's, uh, or the primary axis that it goes up at. So when we create the outline, it uh, we can extrude it correctly. And the way we're going to do to figure out the primary axis that the plane is on is to create two planes, um, one on its side and one into its front. Uh, so you can see here using the Extract 3D tools, it's relatively straightforward. I click a bunch of points on each of the faces and that allows me to create uh, the two primary planes. Um, so on, on the first beam, uh, we have uh, two planes. Using these two planes, um, we can uh, create the cross beam or the cross plane, um, which will allow us to easily extract out the cross section for this plane. Uh, so you can see I'm creating the third plane, uh, plane based off of our existing two planes and then a point in the middle of the plane and that gives us the uh, a cross plane that we can use to slice across the plane. I'm just going to hide a couple of these existing beams because it's getting a little bit cluttered with all these uh, planes that I've got in there and the only thing I've got left is read a cross plane and I can, you can see I've used it to uh, create a cross section. Um, using Tools and Extract 3D I can kind of decide what the selection width is for how many points I want to I wanted to highlight and uh, once I have established that, pretty much I hide the rest, rest of the point cloud because at this stage all I care about is the cross section and the points in it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, just quickly sketch a approximation of the beam um, using the points I have and you can use our fitting and snapping tools in Extract 3 to do that. Uh, if you want to get uh, a little bit more fancier you can draw this whole thing out uh, according to what according to specifications as well especially if the beams are are of known dimensions you can just go with uh, a fixed size beam and fit it to the the point cloud that you have so that you're using consistent coordinates or consistent sizes in our case I'm just gonna eyeball it and and draw a beam that kind of matches what uh, what the points show me just so you can see the process and also in the cases where you don't actually know the size of the beam so you do have to eyeball it, like I'm doing here um, doing this whole process is 
it's not too hard. I mean, you can use, you're essentially using the standard SOLIDWORKS drawing tools and using uh, the point cloud as a guide or outline in terms of uh, what it is that you want to do. Um, so you can see here I've created a 2D cross-section uh, of the beam that we're interested in. Um, and once I've got the beam, you just have to extrude it up and down. Um, so it looks pretty good. It seems to match. Now what I want to do is figure out the top and bottom points I want to extrude to. And any point, I just, as you can see here, I just use the Extract 3D tools to uh, reference a 3D coordinate system based off of the point cloud. And uh, choose that choose a sketch plane, choose my sketch, and then I'm just going to extrude the beam to uh, the, the top part and the bottom part. And doing this is relatively uh, straightforward, although with the point clouds sometimes it's really hard to see stuff. Uh, so you can see I turn on and off the tools pretty frequently just so I can see. As you can see here, uh, I've pretty did a really quick little drawing of a beam um, that pretty much lines up 100% with the point cloud. And uh, if you want to do all of these, uh, you can either duplicate it or you can um, draw them all back from scratch. So next up, I'm going to show you how to do a pipe, not just a beam. Um, the steps for a pipe are pretty similar to a beam and what I did uh, was the same thing. I figured out sort of principal planes and then I created a cross plane of the pipe that I'm interested in. And what I'm going to do here is instead of drawing it, I just fit a circle to it and uh, just use some of the fit commands to fit my circle to it. So in this case, what I'm doing is creating a cir uh, fitting two circles along the pipe so that I can figure out the center point of how these uh, pipes are moving. Because uh, essentially, um, the center point of the doing a pipe is a little bit more complicated than a beam because a beam is just straight up. In this case, on a pipe, it's a U shaped, so it's a little bit harder. So, what I want is the center point of the bottom of the tube and the top of the tube. Um, and then, what I'm going to do is figure out the circumferences of it, of them, uh, create the outline of this, of this tubing, and then cross section it and generate a path. As you see here, I've already created uh, the center point at the bottom of the tubes. I'm going to do the center points on the top of the tubes. And I'm, I'm going to do this because it gives me some control geometry that I'm going to need in order to create um, the, the cross section for this tubing. Uh, so as you can see here, now I have uh, center points of the tubes at the bottom and from the top. And using this information, uh, it's going to allow me to do a, a cross section of this, of, of this tubing. So you can see here, um, every tube is going to be a little bit different depending on the complexity of the tool. In, in this case, this U-shaped tool, uh, tube, tubing, it's relatively straightforward um, in terms of this pipe shape. So you can see here, I'm creating a cross plane on, on this piping here. And now I'm going to get a uh, cross section of the entire path of it. As you can see here, I can I've created, I've gotten a cross-sectional view of this piping now, uh, as long as well as the center point for all the tube. And with this, I can now draw the path I want the uh, extrusion to take. Uh, essentially, what I want to do is create the diameter of the pipe and then just tell it how how I want it to uh, move. Um, this this flat part is relatively straightforward, or the straight parts is really easy. Um, the hard part is uh, trying to figure out exactly what how many degrees this thing is bending. Um, and that takes a little bit of, we don't have any automated tools for that in Stract 3D, unfortunately, uh, but you can figure it out by kind of matching up curves, and that's what I'm gonna do here. Uh, so I figured out the direction, um, or at least the straight portion of set, straight portions of this pipe of where it's gonna go. And what I wanna do next is draw in um, the, the, you know, the, the thickness of this and, and how much it's gonna curve so it can match it up. So it, it, the point cloud didn't, the, the scan of the point cloud didn't pick up the top of the pipe. So I don't actually know what that is. Uh, but I can estimate where the top is by looking at the, the width of the piping uh, because the top should be the same uh, as the, uh, you know, on top as well as from the side because it's the uh, same type of pipe. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is kind of figure out, figure out the 
curvature of the pipe in terms of number of degrees and uh, and that's going to tell me um, that that's going to allow me to, to create the uh, the path so I figured out the number of degrees I applied the number of degrees to both ends of it so once I've got that um, I just do another revolve or not revolve but a uh, a sweep and I can just grab the outline and uh, and just create and from there I've got a pipe and I have parametric control over it and not only that it actually matches up really closely with the point cloud and you can see looking at it also um, this this pipe isn't going straight up and down it actually does have an angle um, so we didn't actually uh, if we didn't uh, was approach it the way we did um, it would have been off so you can see here that the other piping was at the angle and we've been able to uh, create a drawing of it and so it works based off of, uh, of our uh, point cloud. So I hope you've enjoyed our very very quick overview process of how to reverse engineer uh, CAD data out of uh, our point clouds. If you have any questions feel free to email us at, at support at polyguide.com. Thank you very much for your time.